Hi guys, back here again to talk about some dolls. It is a little sooner than I think I would normally put one of these out, but I'm still in a place where I just need an easy, no heavy research or editing needed video. One where I can just sit and talk about dolls. If you're new here, this is just a little recurring series on my channel where I talk about new or upcoming fashion doll releases. I tell you whether I plan on sneaking into my local Walmart stock room and grabbing those dolls for myself, or if they're not actually worth being rested over. But enough of the intro, let's go ahead and get into it. As always, we'll be starting with the wonderful, the untouchable Barbara. We finally have a look at the Rewind Collection Prom Queen doll, and huge surprise here, but I really like her. I do wish the dress was more a ball gown length, or if they wanted the full proper 80s Barbie fantasy, like a removable skirt that went from ball gown to this more party dress length. I think that would help her not feel so overpriced, because these are... Yeah, these are 45 doll hairs, but this line does go on sale very frequently. I've gotten my other rewinds while they were on sale for like $20. So I'll wait for that, but I am definitely getting her. I think she's incredibly cute. There's a 55th anniversary Christie doll and she's really cute too. I think she's a great homage to Christie's original dolls during the mod era. I'm not sure how much she's gonna cost, probably more than she should. But I think this is a really cool release. I love it underneath the robe. She's still wearing this separate, really cute mini dress. So there is some versatility with the outfit. Another character getting an anniversary release, Midge. She's getting a Silkstone reproduction of her very first doll, which is nice, I guess, for all the Midge fans out there. I think I would have preferred something more along the lines of the Christie doll, because I know this isn't the first time they've reproduced this specific midge. I don't know if it's her first Silkstone doll or not, but yeah, it's just a little underwhelming to me, especially compared to Christy. There's also some new Barbie Looks dolls, which are nice. They're nice dolls. I know people really like the Barbie Looks releases. Not so much me, because I literally could not care less about the made-to-move Barbie body, but that is just me. And these are nice. I think if you're looking for some cool looking Barbies to redress or customize, this is a great line for that. There was also a Mattel Creations exclusive Barbie Looks doll, which, again, like, it's a nice doll. She's pretty, but this is a line that's specifically, like, for redressing, right? Or am I misunderstanding that? But I just don't understand the point of upcharging for a mix and match set in a line or the main appeal is the base doll, not the clothes. It's, it's a really odd release to me. On the Disney side of things, we have a new limited edition doll, a 17-inch Tinkerbell, which also apparently marks a price increase in Disney LE dolls. They're now $150. If that's justified or not, I'm not really sure. I don't collect these. I would like to, but now with that price increase, I don't know. Tinkerbell here is really cute though. She's been getting a lot of attention from Disney lately, which I'm not mad about. These are some awful stock photos though. She just looks so greasy. But I have seen some unboxings and such and the actual doll is really nice. There's also a collaboration with Disney and Creative Soul Photography with a collection that, in the words of the website description, reimagines what a classic Disney princess could look like through a new lens. So we have Cinderella, Snow White, Tiana, and Rapunzel. And these are really cool. Disney has been doing some really interesting things in the doll world this year, and it's only February. So I'm excited to see what else is coming. But I do really like these. There's $60 each, which I guess is not too exceedingly bad for a Disney collaboration product, and it's supporting Creative Soul too. My favorite is probably the Cinderella one. I do plan on getting her. I feel like it's been forever since I've seen a full length proper ball gown on what I guess is technically considered a Playline doll, but the hair and all the accessories, they look incredibly well done too. And that goes for all of them. I'd love for them to continue and make more of the princesses. 
We have some stock images of the Bratz Pretty in Punk reproduction dolls, at least the first half of them. I guess they're releasing in waves, so the boys and the Sasha doll are coming later in the year, which I'm gonna be honest, I only care about the Sasha. I have the original Bratz Pretty in Punk Jade, that's all I really ever wanted from this line, but I want to see Sasha, an inch, a crumb of Sasha, anything. But as far as Bratz reproductions go, they're pretty good. They've definitely settled whatever on earth happened with the Rock Angels dolls, and now we're on a pretty good track. I do still crave some more original Playline releases. I know I'm repeating myself every time Bratz comes up, but yeah. Monster High is putting out some new Haunt Couture dolls, the Midnight Runway line. Starting with Frankie, who is actually still in stock at the time of me recording this. So I guess not even the bots wanted them. I do want the Spectra. I think the Spectra doll is pretty nice. Overpriced, yeah, but so is literally everything else on Mattel Creations. But I don't like the masks. I don't get it. Like, is it the Masquerade line? Are they the superheroes? I think putting two full body jumpsuits in a single line of collector's dolls is a kind of crazy actually in a bad way and both Frankie and Cleo look very very similar to dolls that have already been released in in Frankie's product images on the website there's literally a photo of a giant hole in their jumpsuit like nothing is working in this line's favor for me honestly it's pretty disappointing. The Spectra's cute, yeah, but the line as a whole, a kind of a big miss for me. And that's coming from someone who actually bought all five of the original Haunt Couture dolls. But on the other side of Monster High, we have images of Skultimate Secrets Wave 2. These are slated for a release in June, I believe. I'm not actually certain when Wave 1 is supposed to come out officially, like, I'm still waiting. But Wave 2 is really cool as well. This one is more wintry themed, kind of making it our first ever full winter themed Monster High line. But I wouldn't really know this was meant to be winter themed without the product descriptions, honestly. Still, I think it's a very, very strong line. I think the... I don't know what material to call it exactly. The cellophane, I guess? The cellophane outfit pieces are kind of cheap looking. They work for some characters better than others, like Laguna, I think it suits her, but on Claudine it looks pretty silly. Which, speaking of Claudine, I love this purple hair on her so much. I think it looks so much better than the silvery blonde they've been giving her. And Cleo too, the new hair color for her looks really really cool. I'm so glad we're finally seeing them play around more with hair colors and be a little more experimental. So I hope they take it further. I'm okay with getting more waves of Skultimate Secrets if it means we get more really strong design concepts like this. Draculaura is probably my favorite of the line. I think all her pieces are so cute and have so much potential for mixing with her other dolls. Frankie looks amazing too, but I think it's kind of impossible for G3 Frankie to miss. All their dolls have been really great. The only one that I think I'm kind of on the fence about is Claudine. Because while I do love the purple hair, I feel like it's a bit too monochromatic. I don't know, I just think Claudine always needs a little more color. And Wave 1 Claudine is just a little stronger in the design department in my opinion. But we also have stock images for Rainbow High Series 5. And normally I would give them their own video, but I think with them only having one outfit now, I don't have a quite as much to talk about, so I'll just talk about them here, but I'll still go one by one. First, there's Priscilla Perez, and I see bright pink. I see a fluffy stole. I'm already kind of in love. I don't think she's doing anything exceedingly different from what we've seen in the past, but altogether I think it's a nice look. I especially like her gloves with the lacing down the sides. I think that adds a lot to her outfit. I do wish she had some more interesting shoes. Like, I think it would help the loss of the second outfit to just have some really interesting standout shoes. Or at least some more personalized accessories, like how many makeup palettes or laptops do we need, you know? And next is Michelle St. Charles. 
And I always say, I always say I don't care for orange, but very consistently, the orange dolls end up being some of my favorites. And no exception here, I think Michelle is gorgeous. I love the Diesel dress. I do hope her clear jacket doesn't end up being like a Maya's and just incredibly stiff. But otherwise, no notes. It's a very simple look, but an effective one. Like, I don't think she necessarily needs anything else added on, you know? Next is Victoria Whiteman. I think she's incredibly lovely. I said on Twitter that she gives me like major Disney fairies vibes. I love the full body freckles. I love her color scheme. However, I do think in comparison to some of the other girls, again, she is just a bit lacking. Her outfit is very, very simple. And I think that could have easily been solved, again, just with some more interesting shoes, some knee-high boots, or even like lacy thigh-high socks. Just an extra uh, something. Because let's be real, we didn't need another blow dryer. That budget definitely could have been better utilized, I think. But otherwise, yeah, she's gorgeous. The shoes really are my only complaint. Next, Olivia Woods. Uh, she gives me major Bratz Adventure Girls vibes, and I'm very into it. When I first saw her, I thought the print on her boots and her jacket were camouflage, and I kind of wish it was. But otherwise, I think she looks really cool. I think her pieces look exceptionally well constructed. I don't love her color scheme. I know there's going to be some pretty intense disagreement over that. But I guess I just favor more vibrant colors personally. But that's not really a complaint. That's just my preference. Next, Kim Nguyen, who probably has my favorite face and makeup of the line. And I really love that dark hair with the blue streaks too. Her outfit... It's cute. Again, it's simple and something I feel like I have seen before, which there is nothing inherently wrong with that. But like I've already said, if you're gonna do a simpler outfit, it does need to be offset by something other than just these tiny, tiny, boring little shoes or give us some cooler accessories, just something that helps her compete with the other girls when they're next to each other on the shelf. And then there's Aiden. And... Eh. I always get comments asking why I don't like boy dolls or just really offended that I don't typically like the boy dolls and let me be clear it's not that I'm against the very concept of boy dolls existing there are some that I like lol omg for instance makes excellent boy dolls but others they're just very boring to me and I do find Aiden to be pretty boring too his hair in the stock photos also just looks like abysmal. Like, I don't even want to think about what it'll actually look like in person. So he he is an easy skip for me. If I had to rank them from least favorite to favorite, it would probably go Aiden, Olivia, Kim, Priscilla, Michelle, Victoria. But that is, of course, just off of first impressions. It's subject to change once I'm actually able to buy them and see them in person. And with that, I think that's everything I have on my list for today. As always, tell me all your thoughts down below. Which dolls you'll be buying, which ones you'll be skipping. I always love to hear all about it, even if like you completely disagree with me. And when you're done with all that, you know, just be sure to like and subscribe for any future fashion doll content. Now go out and get those dolls.